Hello, it's Karen Berniston, and today's technique video is going to combine a couple different tree dies. So I'm going to use the base of the Christmas tree pop-up die set along with the tree from the tree pop-up die set, and those two together are going to combine to make this really cool spooky version of a tree that I'm decorating in a raven theme. And you can check out all of my die designs at karenberniston.com. This is my project for the September 2017 Designer Challenge with a theme of signature style. Now, I thought that my signature style usually incorporates some kind of die repurposing. So that's something that I love to do. So that's why I'm making this card where I combine two different tree dies to make a new kind of pop-up. And then the other thing is that when Halloween rolls around, I really love to make cards that are creepy and spooky and eerie. So I wanted to do something in that theme. Let me show you super quick how I made the Distress Inked backgrounds for my card. I started with two cardstock panels, each measuring four and a half inches wide by five and three quarter inches tall. There are so many good videos on how to make cool backgrounds using the Distress Oxide inks. I used three colors for these backgrounds. I used the Wilted Violet, the Walnut Stain, and the Peeled Paint. The idea is that you smear them on your craft sheet, you spritz that with water, and you dredge or pounce your cardstock through it, and then you heat dry it. And then during that process, you can do a combination of perhaps spraying your background with water, or I like to use a rag and take some of the ink off. And there's really no wrong way to do this, but in the end, you end up with this really great kind of one-of-a-kind background. Now I'm going to switch to Distress inks to make a background in a similar fashion using just some gray cardstock. I didn't even measure it because I knew I just needed pieces that were big enough to cut trees and the, you know, the base of the Christmas tree and stuff like that. So I just made a couple backgrounds like this, just making sure that I used the ink on both sides of the cardstock. And these are made with a combination of black soot, hickory smoke, and ground espresso. Okay, now I'm ready to create my card base. I'd like my finished card to measure four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So to do that, I need to start with a piece of black cardstock that is nine and a half inches wide by six and three quarter inches tall, and then I've scored that in the center for folding. Now I'm not ready to put these background pieces in permanently into the card, but I can use the card to help me determine where they're going to eventually go. And one thing that I wanna do is avoid the fold in the middle. So you can see I'm leaving a little bit of gap as I use my temporary removable tape to just place those two background pieces next to each other, skipping the fold and attach them to each other. Then I want to use the pop-up die. So the pop-up die comes included with the Christmas tree set. That's the one that I'm using for the pop-up mechanism for this card. I want to make sure that there's at least four inches from the center of that die to the back of the card. I can see I can push that back a little bit actually because there was a little bit of extra room there. I'm also going to tape my die into place. Now notice there is a triangle shaped hole in the middle of that die that should point towards the front of the card. You are looking at the front of the card. I always build my cards backwards when I'm making the video so that you the viewer are always looking at the front of the card. So now I'm ready to cut that pop-up into those two base pieces. So I'm just gonna make my sandwich for a wafer thin die and roll that right through my Big Shot machine or whatever die cutting machine that you like to use for a wafer thin die. Let's take a look at what the pop-up die does. It will cut two tabs into the card on either side of the fold that will fit the trunk of the Christmas tree perfectly. I will end up using decorator dies from both of the Halloween die sets. This graveyard scene comes included in the Halloween scene die set. So I'm gonna use that on both sides of my card interior. And I'll keep the purple graveyard scenes that come out because I'll use those on the front of the card. And then what'll happen is where those were die cut out of the purple paper, once I glue that then to the black cardstock, I'll get that illusion of having that graveyard along the bottom edge of the card's interior. I've used a tape runner on the back of the purple cardstock, except for down at the bottom where I've got all that little bits of grass and things, and I'll use some glue in those areas. And I'm leaving these two pieces taped to each other for now. It'll just help me when I'm installing them inside the card so that they line up nicely and that the tabs are still right across from each other so they'll fit that Christmas tree trunk. But once I have those two glued inside the card, then I can remove those temporary pieces of tape. 
Okay, next step is the spooky tree. First, I'll die cut two trees out of my black background pieces. And this is from die number 1005, which is the tree pop-up. And I'm using only the tree itself from this die set, so none of the other pieces. What I'll do with these trees is I'm going to cut notches into them. So first, I'm going to start by cutting a notch in one of the trees from the bottom of the tree. And I'm going to go about halfway up. I'm not measuring, just about halfway up and I'll cut a little notch out of that tree. So that means just two parallel cuts pretty close together and then just take the sliver of tree out from the middle and then you'll end up with a little notch like this. The other tree needs a notch as well, but that notch should be from the top of the tree. So what I'll do is I'll line up those two trees right over the top of each other and then I can use a pen to mark a dot on that second tree just at the top of the notch. And that way I know how far down from the top of the tree to cut to create the notch that will slot into that other one. So once again, I'm just using my scissors, making two parallel cuts, and just making sure I go down to my pen line when I'm cutting that notch. Okay, let me test this out. I'm going to take the two notched trees and basically just slide them into each other and see if the bottom of the trunks line up nicely, and they do. So that's how I'm going to make that opening and closing three-dimensional tree. I need to switch back to my other tree die, the Christmas tree pop-up, to cut the trunk piece. And I'll do that out of some of that leftover black background that I used for cutting the trees themselves. Now this piece here is scored for folding in four locations, so I just need to find all of those score lines. And what that'll do is that'll create a little tree trunk. So there's a tab that connects it to the other side. I'll need just a little bit of adhesive on that tab and then connect it to itself to create that tree trunk. So there's some little holes in the top of that tree trunk and those should be near the top. So in other words, the fatter part of the tree trunk is the, the base of it. And that will fit down perfectly over the tabs in the card and those tabs will go right up into the corner of that tree trunk. So I usually just work one at a time, add my glue, and then just go in and pinch that tab until it's attached to the trunk just right in the corner there. And then what I can do is just kind of move it out of the way a little bit to give me access to my other tab, and just add my glue to the top of the tab, and then I just want to go in there and pinch that into the other corner of the tree trunk base. And then once that glue sets up, that tree trunk is in the card now, and you can close the card and give it a good press in the closed position, and you'll see that it'll just pop right up when the card is opened. The only other die out of the Christmas tree die set that I'll need for this card are the two big trees themselves, and I've cut those out of the other piece of black background that I created. And these trees are basically just going to be used for the mechanism along the bottom. So I don't even need the tops of the trees. I'll just cut those off. All I'm really looking to do is to glue my spooky trees to those Christmas trees such that I can keep those little holes at the bottom of the Christmas tree that fit on the Christmas tree trunk. So I'll add my glue to the back of the spooky tree, the one that has the notch at the bottom. And then I'll glue that one to the Christmas tree half that has also has the notch at the bottom. And the positioning on this is I'm just going to start the spooky tree just above those little holes that are in the base of the Christmas tree itself. So now what I can do is get rid of all the excess Christmas tree. So what I mean by that is I'm going to start at the top here and I'm going to come out at an angle. And basically I just want to keep those holes that are in the base of the Christmas tree. So I'm just coming out kind of just at an angle going out far enough to where I maintain those little holes at the base of the tree. Then the other thing I need to do is I need to get the notch back into the spooky tree. So now I've glued it to that Christmas tree and then that has covered up some of my notch. So I need to go in there using that spooky tree as a guide and recut the notch. And here you go, a spooky tree wearing bell-bottom pants. That's what it looks like. Okay, now I want to do that again. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because you kind of get the idea. I want to glue my tree to the other Christmas tree. So I'm just adding the glue to the back of the tree. I want to position it starting just above the holes, just like I did with the other tree. I'm just doing the exact same thing now with the second tree. Then I'll take my scissors, starting from the top, I'm gonna to cut out at that angle, making sure that I keep the hole. 
and then I'll do it on the other side, making sure that I keep the hole. And you may look at the base of this tree and say, hey, there's three holes. Well, that's actually that center one is actually just the leftover remaining slot that was in the Christmas tree. So that will not be used at all in today's assembly. We'll just use the two outer holes for the assembly. Okay, from here, the addition of that tree to the trunk is the same as if you were making a Christmas tree. So the tree trunk itself has little tabs, one on each side of the trunk. You fold that tab outward a little bit to where you can put that tree down into the trunk and then wiggle that tab back through the hole that's on the tree. You can see right there, I've got that first tab in. And then you just go around and do each side. This is not a good camera angle for this. I really needed to get close to this kind of up near my face. So I did, but let me show you when it's done. Basically, you just wiggle the tabs in on all four sides and that will connect then that tree to the trunk and everything will start working. Okay, if you need to pause the video right here and take a look at this freeze frame, you're gonna see how each side of that tree is just there with those taps going through the holes. But you could also watch the Christmas tree video if you needed just another visual of how to do it. Okay, the pop-up is done and it's time for decorating. I had these metal spider charms from the Tim Holtz collection. So I hung one out of the tree using thread and then added a vellum spider web cut with the Halloween scene die set. Since I was going for a raven theme, I chose the blackbirds that are in the Halloween elements die set to cut out of the remaining black background pieces and then just glue those into the tree. Now I do need to watch the location of the birds because if they're too high, then when the card is closed, the birds will stick up out of the card. So I just need to add a bird to the tree and then just test it real quick. For the greeting, I combined a die cut word happy with a stamped word Halloween. And then I'm going to cut out that greeting using one of the label dies from the Catherine label pop-up die set. Another cool embellishment from the Tim Holtz collection are these bones. So what I did is I punched two holes in the top of the label and then I'm just going to weave that bone through. And then I repeated that process to make a second label for the front of the card, this time using a stamp I've had in my collection forever. I don't even know who originally made it that has a portion of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, which is one of my favorite poems. So there is one thing you have to consider when you're decorating the background down in the area where the tree is going to collapse into its closed position, and that is that you don't want to create catch points that the branches can get stuck underneath. So that bone is a little bit daring, but as long as you choose a location where an edge of a branch isn't going to tuck underneath it, it should be fine. And I do recommend like things like these spiders and spider webs that I'm going to use as additional embellishment. Don't use pop dots underneath them, otherwise you're just creating potential catch points for your tree. Just leave them nice and flat and let the tree itself be the fun dimensional element inside the card. Remember I kept those purple graveyard scenes from inside the card and now what I've done is staggered them, added a black version of those same graveyards behind them to create a shadow, and then I'm going to embellish with a few strips of washi tape. So just kind of deciding where all my elements are going to go here on the front of the card. The background itself is just a piece of pattern paper, but I did add some inks and stuff to it to distress it. So it says, Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortals ever dared to dream before. So naturally, inside the card, I needed to quote the raven, nevermore. So I'm just using some black letter stickers along the bottom of the card. Okay, now the techniques in this card in terms of combining those two trees can be used for other themes. You can imagine how pretty this would be as a bare winter card or a fall card with some leaves falling off of it, or even a spring card. So just change out the colors, change out the theme. You've got a really cool year-round card. And if you follow my dimensions, then the card will end up being four and three quarters by six and three quarters, which means it will mail in an A7 envelope. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all of my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.